Hey everyone, so welcome to part three of this Rudolf Steiner series. I didn't really want to create a series, I only wanted one part, but here we are. And sometimes projects do what they do. And let's have a look. So I just want to see who Rudolf Steiner was, okay? Like what kind of a person. Um, nothing too deep, nothing too, you know, just a basic structure to move out from. Um, where was he at the time in his development? Where was he at the time where he was doing all these lectures, writing all these things, um, having these visions, having these downloads? What was going on with him? So let's have a look here. And I'm just going to do a really simple layout. And this layout... Is this is who everyone saw him as, including himself. This is who he himself only saw himself as. This is how everybody else saw him. And this is how spirit saw him. God only. Nobody saw him like this. That was a hidden side of him. Okay? So, once again, this is how he saw himself. This is how everyone else saw him. This is how... No, this is how everyone saw him. Sorry, this is how he saw himself. This is how everyone else saw him. And this is how God or spirit saw him, the, the unseen side of him. And this seems to be some kind of additional information to all of this. So I'll pull this, I'll open this up last. So let's see how he saw himself, right? Or how everybody saw him. What was his general image? We've got the moon. And the moon, he talked a lot about the moon. A lot of his lectures have to do with the moon and the relationship of the moon to the earth. The moon can also represent grandmother energy, so it would be interesting to see how connected he was with his grandmother side, especially I'm feeling the maternal, maternal grandmother side as well. Um, I do feel that he, we know that he saw a, had a vision when he was young of a woman that was watching over him or that may have been his aunt that passed away, but he did have a vision that opened up his all his psychic gifts and faculties, made him aware of them at least. And um, so this may be something. The moon also represents anxiety, worries. It could be that he was very sensitive and very anxious, um, had a lot of concerns, worries. He may have been a pessimistic thinker as well with the moon, right? Because the moon you're focusing on... on all those things that you can't resolve, all those shadowy fears that you have. So it could be that he also became this spiritual or became this way because he was looking to overcome whatever was holding him back. So he definitely moved through a dark night of the soul during life. He did have um, some difficulties that people did take note of. How only he saw himself, the queen of discs. So he was definitely in service to the feminine, right? We see, we have here two feminine cards. So the definite flow of his consciousness was to serve the feminine. The Queen of Discs also shows um, material matters, resources, bringing things to life, bringing things to earth, birthing things, cloaking things. So maybe he saw himself as a creative, you know, bringing that inspiration to life, cloaking it in words or in concepts that he could then pass on to others and enrich others with but also again this feminine connection shows up so women definitely played a strong role in his life next up we see how everyone saw him but he didn't see himself like this they saw him as strong incredibly strong and peaceful there's this gentle warrior but this unmistakable strength that um, goes in with him he was probably also very disciplined and very passionate very deeply passionate very strong about his beliefs and um, what he thought and what he saw um, very productive very able to harness those inner drives those inner inclinations and turn it for good um, very, very, very creative, right? So there's that. And I feel like he could empower people as well. Like there was a passion that he was able to show others, give others, pass on to others. There's, there's something about being able to share this passion. So not just having it, but being able to share it. 
how God saw him or spirit and no one else a hidden side we've got the ace of cups and the ace of cups is um, in this case it's it's very the ace of cups has to do with the infusion of spirit creating the sensation of joy and happiness um, in ancient esoteric but also in ancient biblical lore all good things come from God only so when we see that cup and the spirit of the dove of the Holy Spirit coming into that cup um, we know it has to do with an infusion of spirit um, giving us this this feeling again of happiness wholeness joy all of that and so with the ace of cups here it's he's definitely spiritually connected angelic almost or in connection with these angels um, very sensitive very in tune very um, protective almost right very gentle very emotionally empathetic so what strongly comes through is his gentle nature there's a strong feminine side to him a strong feminine lean um, very gentle nature um, possibly dealing with emotional disruptions emotional imbalances emotional um, yeah just emotional things that he wasn't able to easily resolve but also very practical minded down to earth grounded thinking about the day to day things of life and how to bring it to earth his channelings his visions his inspirations his downloads the extra card we've got the queen of swords so this may be another aspect to him that rarely came out or came out when it had to but it's a very judging side of him like nothing missed his sharp eye that's the energy i'm getting off very observant very um could be nitpicky right could be nitpicky dotted eyes cross t's and looked exactly what you were doing and um very wise desiring of wisdom but also like very judgy very judgy okay so that was a, a shadow side for him alrighty so that seems to be where he was at so definitely in the flow definitely channeling something definitely connected to spirit and to higher and let's see is are his messages true is this you know a situation that may unfold for us in the near future um, how will his messages unfold is this going to happen in the near future is this something that we we have to worry about so the first one that came up is the chariot and future past future past extras okay so what about this message here of, of um, Rudolf Steiner? The message seems to be something that was, it's unique, the chariot. It's, it's definitely not something that you read everywhere. His, his stance was unique, his positioning was unique, and he was a head above the rest in his day. Right. He was definitely, we see this, aura here that is just super it looks like one big super antenna so he was drawing information and maybe testing it with his instinct and feeling is does this feel right is this something that i want to pick up something i want to pursue something i want to follow and it's definitely meant because the chariot is in movement so it's meant to be moved this message is not meant to stay where it originated it's meant to be brought out in the world and the chariot also shows that the message itself carries itself by itself it will be naturally spread there is a infinite um, connection understanding of the story of how he sees the future um, that people are that's shared easily right so the immediate past we've got the king of swords and this is showing a time of judgment right so this comes this chariot is coming after a time of judgment but also warlike and a very cool very distant very rational kind of lifestyle and place to be the distant past we've got the star okay the 
the immediate future, we've got the Knight of Swords and the final outcome, we've got the Nine of Cups. So everything is going to be okay. The immediate past with the King of Swords that, and before that the, the, the Star, it does feel as if, um, first of all, yes, he's telling the truth, right? So we see the King of Swords and the Star together. This is definitely truth, truth time. And so he's telling the truth. It's a unique message. It's going around the world, Knight of Swords, Whirlwind, and Nine of Cups. This is making him happy. This is exactly what the two extra cards here at the top. We've got the world and the Ten of Discs. Yes. Again, yes cards, right? So this is the answer to the question. Are these, um, I'll put this down here, are the messages that he's been given us, that we've been seeing, that we've been talking about the last couple of days, are these authentic? Are these true? And according to these cards, it's saying yes. Yes, they are true. Ten of Discs on the Tree of Life is the manifestation um, in this world, in on this plane, in this level. The world is, well, the world, it's completion, it's the ending of a cycle. We've got the chariot. The message was meant to get out there. It was meant to take its course, to go its own pathway. And it's meant to whirl up some things. Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords also has to do with the sword suit completely has to do with truth, right? So the truth gets a little stretched with um, cups <laughs> and gets a little, you know, abused with, with wands. But the pentacles, um, they can hide the truth a little bit sometimes. But the swords, they can't, like they live by the truth, you know, it, it slips out in the most unelegant way sometimes. And we see two swords showing up. So we've got truth, truth, truth. The star is honesty and truth. And the nine of cups is the outcome. So even though things are going to look a little bit rocky and they're going to look dicey, knight of swords for the next while, the outcome is going to be nine of cups. We're going to be very happy and we're going to get what we want. Right? We're going to be happy. And um, there's emotional satisfaction coming for us. So it looks really good, you know. Um, it's saying, yes, his messages are true. However, uh, it's pushing us in a, in a good, positive direction. We're going to be doing good, positive things with this. Let's see. So let's ask specifically about the message that he received regarding um, the vaccine, right? So are we going to be forcefully vaccinated? And is this vaccine, is this vaccine going to be mandated? And does the mandated vaccine, if it's mandated, will it have a gene editing particle in it that allows our perceptions towards spirituality to be changed. Is this the truth, please? I'm aligning to truth. I'm seeking truth. Please allow us to see the truth. Are we going to be forcefully vaccinated? Is this going to be mandated? Question. And if yes, is there going to be a gene editing component in this vaccine? And what will the outcome be? Okay. All right. So the first card is, is this true? Are we going to be forcefully vaccinated? We've got ace of discs, eight of discs. They're definitely trying everything in their power to do so. Right. And this is definitely showing the battle between good and evil right? The struggle, the hard work, and the innocence that lies in between. That is the only thing that is keeping these two sides um, away from each other. It's also an issue that polarizes, right? It's a polarizing issue. It pushes people, even in the same families and friend circles, on one side or the other. And so both have to remember that in the middle, what unifies us both is our innocence and our desire for peace, our desire for harmony, our desire for love and success, right? 
but this is usually also a yes card so I'm gonna go with yes that they are going to try to get us to um, do something in that direction is there going to be a gene editing component within that vaccine we've got three of cups <laughs> Okay, so Three of Cups, as you guys know, is happiness, it's success, it's joy, it's ecstasy, right? So let's have a look. Whose joy, please? Whose joy are we looking at? Is it the scientists or ours? And the one that flipped out is the Three of Wands. So I want to go with, this is the vision of the future. This is a vision of the future. And... Please explain. Three of five of swords. Yeah, so five of swords has to do with um, hidden things, mean things, um, falling in your back, backstabbing, right? But this particular image has kind of a different, a little bit of a different correlation. So I'll just look up what she meant with that image. The Five of Swords. Um, all the fives carry with them an element of challenge and suffering. As in a spectrum of one to ten, there are the furthest you will be from the divine, locked into the pit of your body, your own hell, into which you will have to go to retrieve the core of yourself so you can turn and move back toward that source in the ten. Work through the pain and suffering, illness, depression, whatever is afflicting you, you must keep going. Question all paranoia, strategy, discipline, civilization, wisdom. That's what she, prejudice, defamation, dishonor. Okay, so it feels like um, something's going to get in the way of this. So it may be that the people that are, you know, creating this, they're seeing themselves as being defamed. They're feeling like they're misunderstood. They're feeling like, you know, um, their reputations are being dragged through the mud, the Five of Swords. Uh, they're being treated dishonorably. And they feel that they had a bright vision for the future, the Three of Wands, that they were intending something positive. So this is the way they perceive it, the way they see it. And they're going to be very happy and ecstatic when this vaccine or this um, beep <laughs> gets out to the people, right? And there is going to be something coming down the pipes, but it feels very free. So even though it may be in a sense, um, mandated it doesn't feel like this is something that they're going to you know literally physically enforce or anything like that it it even from afar doesn't this look like a syringe like when you're just looking at it kind of off the side like this is popping out here so it's it's definitely the, a debate that is that is not only splitting families and friends and on you know online platforms but also the scientists themselves they're, they're also getting into debates. Uh, what's the best way to move forward? This way, no, that way. And there will be a good positive outcome, the Three of Cups. There will be a celebration. There will be happiness. There will be joy. However, whoever's in connection with this, they're feeling like they're being defamed. They're feeling like their reputations are being dragged through the mud. They're feeling that their vision that they had is being sullied. And they also feel like they're... they're almost like their inspirations and their wisdom because here we have the snake that represents wisdom right that it's it's being tarnished it's being slashed the five of swords so what will the outcome be we've got the knight of wands wow um <laughs> this is an interesting card so it's showing electricity the sign the symbol of electricity in the palm of his hand there's also i believe a rune but not like that the rune would look like that i think yeah right, that would have been a rune so this though is um usually a symbol of electricity so something that moves fast that is very quick and let me just look up here what she 
meant with this image because I find it interesting to see what the the artists and the creators also meant right to bring that in too but she drew she wanted to draw a black panther and then the animal became ambiguous it's polar to the other knights um, the quest for power and energy the holy flame though not necessarily with the maturity to use it responsibly holy flame into something constructive rather than destructive dark mysterious solitary dramatic shamanistic passionate and intense an infusion of fresh energy that is transforming a situation and so there's fresh energy coming into this situation there's a fresh insight there's a fresh awareness a fresh knowledge someone bringing fresh information but i also want to say that the conversation is going to shift towards energy energy concerns energy conservation probably energy distribution but also uh, a type of energy that we're going to be using in the future that we're going to be talking about and it feels very ominous so it's even though it doesn't intend to be ominous it feels ominous and i just feel like everything's the the conversation is going to shift away from all of this over here and this is going to take over right this is coming in and it's coming in fast and it's coming in soon there's something happening around energy that's coming up that's taking away the discussion okay so um and not today that that syringe that um that vex it, it's not coming today it could come today the possibility the resources are there but it's not coming today okay so what about his other visions that we talked about in depth in part two uh great spirit can you please explain that a bit more the other visions that we saw in part two of the series about man merging with machine what is that about so we've got this one this one and outcome so this is what it is this is what it's not and the outcome so this is what it is nine of wands uh, nine of wands has to do with a lot of resistance and right now it's probably not going to be possible in the way that we immediately have images in our mind because there's just too much resistance it would unleash the beast it would it, we're not there yet and um, so right now this is what the topic is at but again it's it's the wand suit so when we think of truth or what kind of truth is in there with the wands truth can be flexible you know it depends on on what they need right now or where they're standing right now so but the nine of wands usually has to do with protecting truth standing up for truth standing in for truth and um, the truth of your feelings the truth of your emotions and this would be definitely an explosive matter an explosive topic this is what it's not it's not wise this is not something that we should play around with that we should tinker with that we should um, invest a lot of research into at this point and what is the outcome the page of cups we're, we're definitely going to embark on a more gentler softer more spiritual bend it's it's a new age is coming up a new possibility is coming new doors are opening and with the page of cups there's an offer and it's almost like an offer from spirit or an offer from god like will you take my hand will you come this way will you work with me will you create with me now this seems to be a very creative being with all these tattoos it's just beautiful and um it just really feels like the the time has not yet come for that it's it's not yet come right now we're going to settle down and with the page of cups there's a new era of of love of understanding of caring and offer as well it may be that even some governments apologize that some apologies on its way some form of reconciliation with a people okay and just one more ten of wands yeah no it's it's too much of a burden right now to push that through 
So it's going to be a long time if that goes through at all, but it looks like we have shifted timelines or we've taken a step in a different direction. And um, it really looks as if this is too much of a burden. It's too heavy. It's too much work. It's too much energy to be expended um, for, for nothing really. Okay, so nothing to worry about there either. Okay, so let me switch the cards here to the Path of the Soul Destiny cards. What is the purpose of these messages, please? What is the purpose of these messages of Rudolf Steiner? What was the purpose of these messages of Rudolf Steiner? What was the purpose? Why did we receive these? What are they supposed to teach? What are they supposed to teach? What are they supposed to teach? Let's see here. So the past, the present, and the future. Oh my gosh. Okay, so they're supposed to awaken in us love and friendship. I mean, that's the stating some people will say that's so obvious but no it's not obvious <laughs> he did speak a lot about love and friendship he spoke a lot about the only way to get over or through certain things was to love the first card that you see here has to do with the third eye so this is acknowledging his vision it's acknowledging that he had clear or has clairvoyant abilities and he was able to see things in other realms and look through the portal into other things but the fascinating thing about our universe and the world in which we live is that everything is a potential until it collapses as a reality so it's quite highly likely that he was observing potentials that he was looking at things the way they could be possibly that there were machinations behind the scenes where things were being put into order for this to manifest into our world it's very likely that he was looking at um, that he was seeing things that he knew to be true In the card 26 it says here third eye the third eye rules psychic abilities and clairvoyance. Although every human is born with the ability to see beyond the known, it does not mean that they always access it. Your intuitive gifts and abilities are very strong. When this card appears, it is because you are ready to move to the next level in the development of your inner seeing. Intuitive development is important for your growth at this time. Expanding your gifts not only benefits you, but also aids those who need the guidance and support you can provide from source. So he was doing it to provide sort, um, support and guidance, um, also to prove in a sense that is more, there's more to life than meets the eye. Around the time he was doing it, the turn of the 20th century, people were still very skeptical, open but skeptical. The second card is friendship or companion's love, sorry. This card speaks of passion, creation, and union between lovers, allowing yourself to be truly seen and vulnerable in an important step in learning to trust. There are many levels of love which can be experienced, but this speaks of the deepest, most intimate of all connections. Through this deep connection, energy is in full flow. Love is source energy. Whether we experience this source alone through meditation or through a connection with another, it is still source. Enjoy it, play in it, and allow yourself to fully embrace all it has to offer. So this is confirming that he was in connection with source energy and he was bringing it through and telling us what source energy wanted us to know, right? Or what this field of consciousness was revealing, if that sounds better. <laughs> So the last card, we've got an interesting one, very bright. This has to do with rebirth. Now is the time for quiet retreat and rest. It is a wonderful opportunity to nourish your heart, mind, and soul. The Universal Mother has taken you into her womb in preparation for a rebirth. You are being called to rediscover yourself. Take a clear evaluation of your life, relationships, and your own self-worth. Take time away in solitude. During this time of reflection, you may notice things that no longer serve you. Things will change. It's okay. Everything is exactly how it should be. So this is a beautiful closing off. And it's just showing that, you know, he, he gave all he could. He gave what he had. He gave what came through and what was meant to come through and what was meant to be said at that time. 
and it is all good it's all wonderful it's full circle it's come full circle right and it's it's um it was intended for us to this full circle here it makes me think of reconnection but it was intended for us to focus on love to realize that there's more to the world than what we see with the eyes there's the spirit world as well and to focus on developing our love growing our love and then bringing that out into the world too right bringing that out into the world too rebirth and re rebirthing ourselves rebirthing ourselves in the in the light of truth of spirit of of being a spiritual being right this was the intention behind the works that came through him so that's the main lesson that we're meant to learn is to develop our own connection and to rebirth ourselves all right you guys that's the end of this series with rudolf steiner i hope you enjoyed please leave your comments in the comment section below don't hesitate to like share the series and this video and keep your chin up and um, positive outlook only <laughs> and we will get through this everything is going to be okay much love to you guys bye